Hi, my name's Bex. Um, I've been asked to do this vlog by my wife Steffi. Um, she's the most amazing person I know. I love her to bits. She's uh, inspirational. She's strong and brave and intelligent and stubborn and kind and considerate and caring and stubborn. Um, the stubborn part is something that's great some of the time and something that is infuriating the rest of the time. Um, but I can't really talk because I'm stubborn myself. Um, the point of doing this vlog really was just to tell you a bit about our story, um, to tell you how I feel um, and to tell you how maybe you can help um, people in your life. Um, Steffi suffers from AS. Um, she has been getting symptoms for just over five years. She's been diagnosed for two. Um, three years, I believe, is quite a quick diagnosis. Um, I know some people have been 30 years until they got the diagnosis. Um, it's not good enough. It's, it's something that needs to change. Um, I believe a fairly easy blood test could help get diagnosed quicker um, for a lot of people, 90% maybe. Um, I think that, I mean, at the moment, Steffi is medication free. She has been on a cocktail of painkillers and anti-inflammatories. Um, the actual benefit of them was outweighed by the side effects. Um, she's an intelligent girl. She almost completed a nursing degree. She had to quit 12 weeks before the end of her practical because she just physically wasn't able for it. She lost power in one of her legs, um, had a fall, not at work, luckily. Um, uh, she was working on an oncology ward at the time and she said if, if I'd been taking somebody to the toilet, you know, it would have been catastrophic possibly. So she took herself off work, the human resources agreed with her um, and ended up not being able to complete the degree just for the sake of 12 weeks, you know, of being on a ward. Um, she was devastated at first. She, the, the college were very good and they gave her a um, first class bachelor's degree in health science which is great she can go on and do a master's um, with something more specific to um, possibly advocacy or health promotion um, human resources she's got a lot of options going from that which is great um, if she ever gets to the point where she feels able to do that she we would love to have a family which is why she's decided to go drug free at the moment um, I'm sure most of you know you, you, you can't be looking to conceive if you're constantly on painkillers. Um, it's not good. Yeah, so at the moment she's coping. Um, every day's a struggle, but every day was a struggle when she was on the pain meds. Um, I can't imagine being in pain every day of my life. I've been in pain from time to time, as we all have. We don't remember pain. Um, if we remembered pain, I'm sure there'd be a lot of women out there that only had one child. Um, you you can remember being in pain you don't remember what it was like specifically and I think it's important for all of us to remember that you know it's it's not something you can imagine feeling like it's not something you can put yourself in their shoes because you don't know unless you've been there um, you know you you could have broken leg in six to eight weeks you're likely not to feel any more pain from it you know it's it's not something that you know you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life even when she was on the pain medication she wasn't pain free it eased it um at times i think she had about 10 minutes pain free after one visit to a physiotherapist and they just managed to i don't know <laughs> hit something right and she actually was pain free for about 10 minutes um that was about three years ago so um say so it, it doesn't bear thinking about i wouldn't want to be in her position um but i would put myself in her position if it meant that she would be pain free unfortunately i can't do that um i try to be supportive i try and do as much as i can um i don't do it for her i i, I couldn't do it for her she wouldn't let me um I think, you know, the the medical industry as a whole needs to take a good look at themselves. She's had other medical issues, 
unrelated to, or we think unrelated to the AS. When we've asked if it could be related to the AS, we've been told no, um, the AS is, affects the joints. We know that it doesn't just affect joints, we know it also affects other soft tissues like the eyes and the heart and the lungs. Um, so I don't see why it couldn't affect other areas as well. Um, it is an inflammatory disease, so it would make sense. The doctors don't seem willing to ask colleagues if this could be related. Um, she was in hospital this week. We asked the doctor whether this, you know, pain, she was getting a pain in her stomach. Um, they did a few tests, nothing really come back conclusive or inconclusive. Um, we asked the doctor if it could be related to the AS and his answer was, oh, well, why don't you ring your rheumatologist and ask them? So, you know, not particularly helpful. She's already been in for four days and now he's telling us to go to a different department. Why could he have not done this to four days earlier? You know, maybe she would have got pain relief quicker if they'd known what to give her. I don't know. Um, I'm not educated on these things, but it kind of seems logical to me. Um, how I feel about AS, I'm angry. I'm angry her body's letting her down. Um, sometimes I feel like it's letting me down, but it's more letting her down than me. Um, I, I, I feel frustrated. I can't take her pain away. I can't make her feel any better. I can't really, I can't make her sleep better. I can't make her feel less tired. There's nothing I can do. And it kills me knowing there's nothing I can do. I'm naturally the sort of person that likes to help people, and I can't help in this situation. And, and it is, it's hard. It's hard every day. It's hard every day seeing her struggle, hard every day sh seeing her struggle put her shoes on, to get out of bed, to get dressed, to shower. You know, she loves to cook, but she can't cook most days, or she doesn't feel able to stand there chopping vegetables and, and whatnot. Um, and it's hard because I know everything she in used to enjoy doing some of that enjoyment is taken away now because it causes her pain you know to sit and crochet it, it's, it causes her pain to sit and watch telly causes her pain to lay down and go to sleep causes her pain everything causes her pain you know and it's horrible I, I wish I could take that away even for a minute um, how I can help her well, I feel like I help her by doing things for her. I know she doesn't always feel that way. Um, I try and do little things, you know, put a smile on her face, make her laugh. And we do, we laugh every day. I think we have to. I think you'd cry if you didn't laugh every day. Um, I make up silly songs and, you know, things like that that just hopefully lift her spirits. I'm sure she thinks I'm some sort of nutcase, but she married me, so she can't think it that much. Um, I love her to bits, and I wouldn't swap her for the world. I would take her AS away if I could, um, but I can't. So I guess my advice to anyone who knows anyone who's suffering with a chronic pain, um, whether it be AS or something else, Try and be patient with them. You know, they will let you down. They will say they'll do something and not be able to do it. Don't take it personally. Um, they, or Steph especially, if it's for someone else, she will try 199%. Um, if it's for herself, maybe 50%. But if it's for someone else, she will go to the ends of the earth if she had to, to try and get it done. And she can't always do it. And I know that devastates her. She's always been reliable, and now she's not. And, and I know that's huge for her. Um, you know, birthdays have been ruined in her mind because we were going to go to the cinema and we couldn't because, you know, she couldn't even walk to the car. And I don't care. I, I got to spend my birthday with her. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but she cares. So try and be patient. Try and be understanding. Try and be supportive. And I think most of all, be honest. You know, if you're feeling a certain way about their AS, talk to them. You know, it, it's, it's going to upset them. Of course it is. Everyone gets upset when they hear something they don't want to hear. But if they can understand how you're feeling, 
they can consider you too. You know, this isn't every relationship is give and take, and you have to treat the relationship as you would any other relationship. You know, if you're disappointed they've let you down, tell them you're disappointed they've let them down. But add on to it, I understand why, but I'm still disappointed. You know, you need to express how you're feeling too. You're as important in the relationship as they are. And nobody likes to hear that someone's disappointed in you. But I think it's important that they know you understand, but you've still got feelings about it. And I don't know, I know if if I'd upset Steph in any way, I know she'd tell me um, eventually. Um, I'd hope that we've got that relationship where we can be honest with each other. Um, I think it's important to to be as open with someone as possible. And I think if you're open with them, they'll be more open with you. And ask them how they feel. Ask them how their day's going. Ask them, I don't know, if they have a good day, go and do something, you know? If, if they're having a, a particularly good day, don't waste it, you know? Live life. Um, I guess that's all the advice I've got, whether it's worth a lot, I don't know. Um, I'm sure I'll be asked to do more of these vlogs, and I'm sure I'll hate every one of them as much as I've hated this one, but hopefully you've got something out of it. Um, so take care, keep loving your loved ones, and I'm sure I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.